Hey guys, and welcome back to Z3 Cubing. This is my Rubik's Cube Collection 2022. These are all of the Rubik's Cubes that I've collected in over 10 years of cubing. I believe there's around 450 of them, and it would take over 12 hours to solve them all. Luckily, only a crazy person would actually scramble them. Oh no. Give me a minute. There we go. That's better. Now, it's become a bit of a tradition to set them all up on display and tell you about each one individually. This year, to switch things up a little bit, I'm going to try and give you a fun fact about each of my older cubes that I've never mentioned before, just to make things a little bit more interesting if you've already seen my previous collections. But without further ado, let's get started with my very first cubes from 1x1 all the way up through 8x8 and higher. Of course, the 1x1 is the hardest cube of them all, and this was my very first one. I believe it's made out of black painted Legos with packing tape and paper stickers glued onto the outside with that Rubik's logo there, because apparently that was my idea of a good looking cube when I was nine years old. Now you may have heard the story of how I didn't realize that my very first 2x2 was a Landland and not a Rubik's brand, but the way I found that out was actually through a YouTube comment on my tutorial on how to take it apart and put it back together. Someone said, that's not a Rubik's brand. I said, of course it is. But later I found the original box and of course it said Landland on it. This was my very first cube out of all of these, an old fashioned Rubik's brand from Walmart. Now I learned how to solve a 3x3 on this cube, but not using the internet. I actually used this old book from the 80s that my dad gave me, which is a terrible 3x3 method, but actually surprisingly similar to the Ortega method on the 2x2. This is the old style Rubik's 4x4, it turns absolutely terrible, but fun fact, the day I got it, I scrambled it up, and then instead of learning how to solve it, I instead learned how to take it apart and put it back together. I did that dozens of times before actually learning how to solve it years later. Similar to that last one, the old Rubik's 5x5, which I also had an obsession with taking apart, but the funny thing is, the first time I tried to take it apart, I actually broke one of the pieces, and so I ordered a replacement from none other than my favorite Cuban YouTuber at the time, Me, Myself, and Pi. I think he had dissected one of these for science, and he was selling off the extra parts as replacements. The V Cube 6, a revolutionary cube for being the first 6x6, but it also turns just terrible. And speaking of Me, Myself, and Pi, he actually had a really popular mod called the Pi Mod to make this cube turn a lot better, which I always wanted to do, but I was just too scared to do it. The V Cube 7, also the very first 7x7, don't ask why it's white. And as with all these original cubes from 2x2 through 8x8, it has these really nice cubesmith tiles on them, but the really funny thing about it is that I was so eager to put these on that I unstickered the cube and then didn't get around to ordering the tiles for another two or three years. So it actually sat unstickered for a very long time. The V Cube 8 was definitely not the first 8x8. It came out years later than the original V Cubes, and I also got it years later when I got back into cubing around eight years ago. But fun fact, I think this is the most expensive cube that my parents ever bought me. And so correspondingly, it was also the cube that I annoyed my parents the most in order to get. I had a bit of a slogan of, I want a V cube 8 that I repeated constantly, and I guess it worked because I got this for my birthday. Now, if that 8x8 represents a two or three year jump in my timeline of cubing, then this 8x8 represents about a five year jump. This is a much newer cube, the Mofeng Zhaoshi MF8, and it turns so much better. It's so much easier to hold in your hands, and the best thing is, it costs less than half as much. In fact, if you were to add up the price of the Mofeng Zhaoshi 8x8 and the MF9 9x9, this cube right here, it would still be a lot less than the V cube 8. This cube is also incredible. It was my biggest cube for a couple years. But none of those even come close to my current biggest and favorite cube ever, the Yushin 13x13. This thing is absolutely massive. It is very expensive. It takes me over an hour to solve, and I think over three hours to assemble. It's just... I love it. Next up is this row of cubes right here, which are my current main speed cubes for every official event at cubing competitions. So these are my best turning cubes out of all of these. This is a two by two made by Gan. It turns great and I love using it as my main. And fun fact, I can never remember what the actual name is. It's like Gan 240 something. This is kind of the Gan 12 Maglev. It came out recently and it turns amazing. It's normally a $79 cube, which uses magnetic levitation in the core. I say kind of because I actually swapped out the rest of the pieces with the ones from the Gan 11 Pro, making it more like a $140 cube. This is the Volk 4M, an all around just pretty good cube, but 4x4 technology has not advanced a lot recently, and so fun fact, I think this is actually my oldest standing main. The Volk 5M is a similar story, also becoming a bit older of a cube now, but I definitely like the turning a lot better. The MGC 6x6 was definitely my most unexpected main. I was using a really expensive one, I think it was the first magnetic 6x6, like $40 or $50, whereas this one came out, it was $25, and somehow it turns way better and also has magnets. The Yushin Hayes 7M, named after Kevin Hayes, is now one of my older main cubes. It was like a super premium magnetic magnetic cube back when magnets first became a thing, and at $60, I think it's now my most expensive main by over double. Luckily I didn't have to pay for it though. This is the fully magnetic X-Man Volt Square 1. So a square one is just a unique type of puzzle that the WCA, or World Cube Association, sanctions competitions for. And fun fact, I think I was actually the very first one to magnetize a square one on the upper layer like this on my original X-Man Volt 
And hey look, now it's being mass produced. The Skube is another unique type of puzzle hosted at official competitions. And the Gans Cube, I believe this is the enhanced version, is the best Skube. It's the only real Skube that's been released in a long time and it just turns amazing. The Pyraminx is yet another unique type of puzzle. And this is the Mo Yu Wei Long Maglev Pyraminx. So it also has Maglev and it's pretty much brand new. I got it straight from the factory. I'm not sure if it's even been released yet. It was definitely my newest main so far. This is a Mega Minx. It turns pretty much just like a normal 3x3, except it's a dodecahedron. So it has 12 sides instead of six. This may or may not be the best turning Mega Minx but it's definitely the one with the most fun name, the YJ Yuhu V2. This is a clock, it turns like this, and you can select which ones move with these little pins here. It's the least Rubik's Cube-like puzzle out of everything I have on display here, but it is in the WCA, so I have to have one. This is the Chi Yi clock, it actually turns super well. This is the reason that the clock is still an official event, the Rubik's clock. It was made by Rubik's literally 33 years ago and never made sense. You literally have to buy them on eBay and apparently that was good enough to make it an event. This is another Rubik's clock. I should mention that this one and the last one aren't my mains anymore. I just keep all my clocks together because they have no friends so they get lonely. And I modded this one like the last one with magnets on the pins to make it turn a little bit better. But this is completely obsolete now since the Chi Yi one came out. Let's see, where to next? How about those two massive 3 by 3s you guys have been staring at the whole time? But first, if you've made it this far into the video, clearly you're enjoying it at least a little bit. So right now, go ahead and scroll Scroll down and hit that subscribe button. I guarantee you'll enjoy the rest of my videos too. You have no excuse. Do it right now. I'll wait. I said earlier that the 13x13 is my biggest cube, but if you take the word big very literally, then I guess this one is my biggest cube. It is very hard to hold on camera here, but it is a fully functional massive 3x3, 30 centimeters and $99. This thing is just insane. This is a slightly less insane and slightly less expensive version, but it's still an 18 centimeter cube. So each piece is bigger than a normal 3x3, but it's a little bit more manageable to turn in your hands. And fun fact, it is actually broken. For some reason, a video I was making involved throwing it into a giant pile of snow and a combination of the cold and the impact just shattered this edge piece. Next up, this shelf is most of my Rubik's Cube modifications. So just puzzles that I've modified in one way or another. First, I'm gonna show you a bunch of 3x3 shape mods. So normal Rubik's Cubes turned into different shapes. First up is just a simple bandage modification with this cool pattern here that I just made up. And so basically I glued a bunch of sets of pieces together, filled in all the gaps, sanded everything down, painted everything, added more stickers onto it. Yeah, modding is a long and complicated process, but the result is a nice little challenge added onto a normal cube. This is the Mefferts Bandage Cube, a very similar concept. I also made it myself, but in a predefined pattern. And this thing is just stupidly hard. Fun fact, I have never actually solved it. And that's not for lack of trying. I've had to take it apart multiple times to get it into a solved state. This is a cutter cube, my first real 3x3 modification that actually involved cutting and gluing and sanding and everything. And basically it's just a 3x3 that turns like this. I actually kind of thought that I had invented this cube, but then I later realized that it was actually pretty common and just called the cutter cube. This is another cutter cube, but I made it many years later, which is why it looks so much more professional. But fun fact, it's actually not a perfect cube. It's actually a little bit unproportional. This side is a bit of a rectangle. Normally these pieces would all be normal 3x3 pieces, but I actually had to sand them down to make them fit. And the reason I didn't just make the middle layer pieces on that cube the right size to begin with is because they're actually originally from a different cube. Basically I had the middle layer pieces of that cube, the upper and bottom layer pieces of this cube, which is a Fisher cube, which is just a three by three offset by 45 degrees. And then I sort of mixed around the pieces a little bit to make a cutter cube as well as a Fisher cutter cube, this thing right here. This is an octagonal three by three barrel. I guarantee you'll become very familiar with the concept of barrels very soon. This is basically a non-circular barrel. So it's actually an octagon on the outside. This is also a three by three shape modification, but it's not exactly one that I made. I 3D printed the parts from someone else's design. And this is a ghost cube. And so this is a centerpiece of a three by three right here. And so you can turn all four sides like normal. It's actually a little bit offset in the solved position which makes it incredibly hard to solve. And in case you were wondering, it has the mechanism of a Rubik's brand on the inside and the hardware of a Dian Zanji. This is the YJ Axis Cube, also a 3x3 shape modification, but definitely not one that I made. As you can see, a centerpiece is right here and all four sides can turn around it. So it is literally just a 3x3. It's just in a very weird shape. This is the Mirror Cube, one of the most popular mass produced 3x3 shape modifications. And I think also my first. Basically each side has a height instead of a color. And fun fact, this is actually a Rubik's brand Mirror Cube. I don't think they make them anymore. And it's officially called the Mirror Block. This is the Moyu Crazy Fisher Cube. So basically just a Fisher Cube that has a little bit of an extra offset, a little bit more skewed. And other than that, I honestly have no recollection of why this cube exists or why I own it. This is a windmill cube of some variety. So yet another way to modify a three by three. And like the last one, I'm not exactly sure where this one came from. I think the family of a friend of mine gave it to me. If it's not a cube I unboxed on my channel, I have a hard time remembering where it came from. We're now back to cubes that I made myself for the rest of the shelf. So these are a set of 3D printed cubes. They're basically mini three by threes with extensions glued on. This was kind of the first concept. This is a cool looking cube that has the corners cut off basically. And this is a ball. 
This is the first shape mod that's not a 3x3, it's actually a 2x2, made very similar to those last ones, with a mini 2x2 extension glued on the outside into the shape of an octahedron. But it's actually stickered exactly like a normal 2x2, with 6 colors, so you can solve it just like normal. This is a 4x4 modification, it's a type of cube called a cuboid, and so instead of being like a 4x4x4, it's now a 2x4x4. It's made by taking a 4x4, gluing a bunch of pieces together, and then sanding everything down, and fun fact, I actually sanded it down so aggressively that these pieces are actually paper thin, like half a millimeter it's a miracle that none of them broke. This is pretty much the same thing but with a 5x5, so by gluing and sanding a bunch of pieces you create a 3x5x5. And fun fact, I sanded this one down so aggressively that all these pieces look super weird, and I actually did break one of these center pieces, so I had to buy a brand new 5x5 just to replace and fix that one piece. So that's everything on the back left of that second shelf, except, oh, you guys want to see the Z3 cube? Fine, I'll show you the Z3 cube. So this is my logo manifested in Rubik's cube form, and I literally made this out of the pieces of a 3x3, so like each one of these rotating parts is a center piece, and it just kind of spins like this. And the reason I'm holding this so carefully is because it's actually broken in my Hey Guys and Welcome Back to video, now the most popular video on my channel. I broke it in half, and it has not been fixed yet. Okay, now it's finally time to move on to everyone's favorite modifications, or at least my favorite modifications, the barrels. The 1x1 barrel, much like the 1x1 cube, is the hardest of all the barrels, and I can't really think of a good fun fact, except that you can see four evenly spaced dots underneath the white center, which is because as the paint was drying, I had it rested on top of a Lego. The 2x2 barrel is a 2x2 made into a barrel. It's the only barrel cube up to a 7x7 that solves exactly the same way as the corresponding cube version, the 2x2, and it's also the only one of those barrels that I made out of a non shangsha puzzle. I believe this is a YJ Guanpo. The 3x3 barrel is by far the least well made of all the barrels. There's just lots of little imperfections on the pieces that I normally don't try and show you guys, and that's because it was my very first barrel. It even has the wrong sticker colors. The 4x4 barrel, in contrast, is one of my nicest looking barrels. All the modded pieces are very well rounded, everything just looks nice and polished, and it strikes a good balance between being a big cube, so it has lots of impressive pieces whereas the lines are still completely straight, which makes it look very clean. Once you get up to a 5x5 barrel or higher, you start to get this weird olzing effect where the lines start to look crooked because you've cut so deep into the puzzle. I also made the 5x5 before I made the 4x4, so it doesn't look quite as polished. Also, about a minute ago, I discovered that it can do this. The 6x6 barrel was pretty well made, but it starts to take that olzing effect to the extreme, especially with these little pieces that get cut down so much that you start to see the mechanism underneath. And one fun fact about this cube is that I actually lost a few of the internal pieces as I was cleaning the pieces. I think they went down the sink, and so I actually had to buy some replacements, which you can tell because they're a different color from the original. The 7x7 barrel is by far the most work I've ever put into a mod, and it's definitely my favorite barrel. And fun fact, I actually sanded it down so much that these corners are so small that all of the yellow stickers on the corners are now gone. They all fell off. The Mega Minx barrel might not be the most time consuming barrel I've made, but it might be the most technically difficult and challenging in terms of modding skills, because you actually have to extend out the pieces of the Mega Minx, the normal edges and corners aren't this big, so you have to extend them out and then sand everything down to a barrel, these corners end up really tiny, and it's just a lot of really precise work to get it to work correctly. The Ready Cube might be the weirdest cube that I've ever made a barrel out of, I'll talk about the normal Ready Cube later, but it's actually the cubicle's fault that this cube exists, because on the very first time that they sent me cubes to test out, they sent me a Ready Cube even though I had just bought one for myself, and so I figured I had to mod one. You might think that the Skew Barrel would be one of the easiest barrels to make, but that would be wrong, because you actually have to extend these pieces outwards, just like on the Mega Minx, you might be able to tell that this is a lot thicker than the normal size of a Skew, and so that makes it very difficult difficult to make, and fun fact, you could actually put stickers on these pieces right here, which would actually make it a lot more difficult to solve. The square one barrel is one of the more straightforward barrels to make, and interestingly it's the only barrel that doesn't actually shape shift, no matter how you turn it, it always stays a barrel shape, and this is actually one of my worst made barrels, because I just didn't sand it down enough, and so if you run your finger along it you can tell that the corners are very nice and round, but the edges are totally flat, so I should have just kept sanding a little bit further until the edges also became rounded. The pyraminx barrel is one of the most ridiculous barrels that somehow is actually possible, as you can see this side looks just like a pyraminx, whereas this side looks nothing like a pyraminx, because it was actually extended super heavily, you can see the original piece down there, and interestingly, this is the first barrel so far that's actually stickered differently than the original puzzle, pyraminxes normally don't have opposite sides, so I actually had to add on a white side to this pyraminx. And this is my only other barrel that's stickered differently from the original cube. This is an off-axis 3x3 barrel, so as you can see this is a centerpiece right here, all the sides turn around it just like a normal 3x3, but instead of being based off the flat size of a 3x3, it's actually based off the corner, so it's just kind of off-axis. This is the floppy cube barrel that, now that I think about it, isn't all that floppy, definitely isn't a cube, and doesn't even look much like a barrel, but it's made out of a puzzle called a floppy cube, it can actually do crazy things like this. 
And interestingly, this is the only puzzle I can think of that actually has stickers on the insides of the pieces. And finally, this is a mini 3x3 barrel. I don't normally display it next to my other barrels because it's just a really quick and dirty mod. And interestingly, the stickers on this cube are actually replacement stickers from none other than the V-Cube 8. I guess the size of those stickers happen to be the exact same as the mini 3x3. Alright, next I'm going to move on to a bunch of 3x3-ish mods that aren't exactly shape mods, starting with a bunch of cubes fused together right there. Depending on how you count it, this might be my very first cube mod. Definitely my first cubes mod. Basically, I had a Walmart gift card, so I went to the store and bought two Rubik's brands and glued them together in a way so that they can still both turn. It didn't really work out, they basically just fell apart immediately, but then years later I came to the rescue and fixed it. It still has lots of random super glue all over it, because I must have been really messy back then. These are some more fused cubes, which I made many years later with some much better turning cubes and much better modding experience and knowledge. And the funny thing is, making a Rubik's brand fused cube is actually a lot more difficult because the pieces are so squared off that this center right here actually catches on the pieces, whereas with a modern cube where the centers are nice and rounded already, you can just glue them straight together and it doesn't cause any problems. This is a slightly different way to fuse two cubes together. They're called the Siamese cubes. It's actually a lot easier to do because you don't have to deal with interlocking the cores. You basically just take a few pieces out and glue them together. And fun fact, you can do this. And this is the void cube chain mod. Two void cubes linked together, which are basically just 3 by 3s that have holes in the middle. And it's definitely my favorite way to combine two cubes, because they're basically just assembled in a way that they're interlocked, there's no glue whatsoever, and yeah, I actually broke one of the pieces as I was assembling it, which I then had to go ahead and fix, which was incredibly difficult. We're now moving on to a slightly different kind of mod that I've made a lot more recently, the kind of cubes that I make for the sake of a video, rather than for the sake of the cube itself. And so this cube demonstrates that perfectly. This is the worst cube possible. Basically the stickers are applied terribly, it has reverse magnets so it never lines up straight, it has ball bearings in the pieces which makes it rattle, and the springs are all put in wrong so it just turns terribly. This may look like a normal old Rubik's Cube to you, but it certainly doesn't feel that way for me, and I mean that very literally because this is the world's heaviest Rubik's Cube. It is over two pounds, it is almost impossible to turn because it's just so heavy, there's tungsten and a whole bunch of metal inside the pieces, it is just ridiculous. Now this cube is also fairly heavy, but for a very different reason. I believe there's around five dollars worth of dimes stuffed inside of all the pieces. That was part of my attempt to make the fastest turning cube, which turned out decently well. I also added maglev to it before any cube company started doing that. But that version was quickly made obsolete when I made this cube. Basically I took the spring out of this centerpiece and took out all the magnets out of this layer and that makes it so that you can do a U6 with ease and if you put that on the bottom layer you can do something like a D52 pretty easily. I counted. This just might be my favorite 3x3 mod ever. The premise of the video is making the world's lightest speed cube. It still is relatively speed cubable. And basically I just cut out a bunch of plastic, did a bunch of modifications to the core, and I made a super light speed cube. I believe it's around 24 grams. It is just incredible. And that video is really popular now. This was version one of the world's lightest cube. I actually crushed it in my hands in said video about the world's lightest speed cube, but then I meticulously glued it back together. And if you're really careful, you can actually still turn it. It does still work fine. This was one of my April Fool's Day inventions, a perfectly fully functional Rubik's Cube. I don't know what you're talking about, the stickers look great, and you can peel the stickers off. So you can go ahead and swap them around, do whatever you want to solve it, but you're not going to damage the stickers by doing so, at least any more than they already are. This is another cube that looks perfectly normal, except that you can go ahead and pop the pieces out and swap them around. And so this very heavily relies on the magnets in order to work, snap into place, and I basically just cut down 90% of the mechanism so that it still kind of holds the pieces into place, but not really. And finally, version three of my ultimate, definitely not cheating, April Fool's Day Rubik's Cube. Basically, you can peel the stickers off and swap them around, just like the first one, except that the stickers actually stay in their spots with some 3D printed holders, which makes for a much better solving experience. This is just a regular old, old fashioned Rubik's brand, except that it's totally speed cubable. I actually sanded down the pieces so much that it just makes it beautiful to turn. I have magnets in the pieces and all that. It just turns great. This one is kind of the same idea. Despite its looks, it's actually a totally terrible cube, way worse than a Rubik's brand. These pieces are absolute garbage, but I actually made it somewhat tolerable to use as a speed cube. By the way, these stickers are from a GAN 36 SM. This is just a regular old Rubik's Cube, except that it's made out of paper. And it turns out the design that I used didn't actually turn that great, and so it's actually pretty hard to turn. It is fully functional though. Fun fact, I actually messed up the color scheme when I built the core, and so I had to glue some extra pieces of paper on top to fix it. This is another Rubik's Cube made out of paper. It turns a lot better than the other one, which still means not that great, but I at least was able to solve it. And both of these took somewhere on the order of five or 10 hours of work. It is very difficult to make these things. But interestingly, this one weighs in at just 10 grams, which is a lot less than my other plastic lightest cubes. 
And finally, let's go ahead and get to the mods that I'm sure you've all been waiting for, the Lego cubes. This is the 1x1 Lego cube, the hardest of all the Lego cubes, of course. I wanted to make it in the same style as all of my other Lego cubes, which you'll see in a second, and so I rounded down all the corners and glued it onto a black Lego core. But it is actually possible to make one without any sanding or gluing, just 100% Legos, which I made right here. On the inside, it's just a bunch of different Legos that hold it together. The 2x2 Lego cube was one of the trickier ones to make, at least the way I did it, because there's no 2x2s that you can just buy that are the exact right size to glue the Legos onto. I got one that was pretty close, took off all the caps, sanded everything down until it was exactly the right size, and that led to a lot of challenges that should not have been necessary, but luckily it turned out all right. The 3x3 Lego cube is definitely the easiest one to make because you can just buy a cube to start out with that's the exact right size. I think this is actually the first mod that I ever made on my channel. And fun fact, out of all my Lego cubes, it's the only one where I didn't line up the orientation of the Lego logos on all the pieces. So they're all just all sorts of different orientations, which is kind of annoying. The Lego 4x4 looks awesome, but it was definitely the most annoying one to make. That's because there's no cube that you can buy that's the exact right size to fit the Legos. So I had to buy an old fashioned Rubik's 4x4 off of eBay, because I wasn't going to use mine, of course, and then sand down all the pieces to get it so there was the exact right size for the Legos, it was just annoying and it does not turn well. And finally, the Lego 9x9. The only bigger cube I could find that actually had pieces the exact right size to fit Legos onto. This is actually the most recent mod that I've made as of the making of this collection video. And you know what? It just might beat out the 7x7 barrel as my favorite mod ever. I just love this thing. It is so impressive. This is a slightly different type of Lego cube. On the inside, it's actually made out of 100% official Lego pieces, which is really cool. And it actually has a really nice mechanism. The only thing that's preventing it from turning well is the catchiness of the squared off Legos. This is another 100% percent lego cube all these designs are made by puzzle lego by the way and this one is just a little bit more rounded off which makes it turn a lot better i actually speed solved it in just eight minutes this is not a 100 percent lego cube it's just a mass produced 2x3 with fake legos glued onto the outside and i don't know about you but this green and red color are about the ugliest shades you could possibly put on a rubik's cube or a lego all right six hours into recording and i'm finally done with all the mods Oh, wait a minute. Next up are the sticker mods. So this is a shade shifting two by two. It actually uses a sticker set from Cubesmith, the company who made those tiles up there. The sticker set was actually sitting in my drawer for about five years until I finally put them on a cube and it looks pretty cool. Basically each side has two different colors that it switches between depending on the angle. And we also have the shade shifting three by three. Now these style of stickers were actually discontinued by the time I bought the two by two ones and the three by three ones were out of stock. But then recently after I made the two by two video, someone reached out and said that they had a three by three set. They sent them to me and I put them on this cube. This is the grayscale cube, another cube from a sticker set, so every side is a shade of gray. Almost. The reason that it's like this, it used to be black originally, is I needed the black stickers for another puzzle. I believe it was like the Mega Minx barrel. I needed to cover up some holes. And then a few years later, I needed an extra cube for my 4th of July video, and so I added some red stickers to make the American flag. This is another shade shifting sticker mod, but not one that I made. This one is actually mass produced by Rubik's. It's probably the hardest puzzle that Rubik's makes. It is incredibly difficult. Basically, you have to get it so that each side is solved, but also scrambled at the same time. It is just very, very difficult. This is my Minecraft cube. It's actually a V cube product. They used to let you, or maybe still do let you upload pictures onto the website and then print them onto a cube. It's actually really nice printing. And fun fact, I actually tried to get it to follow a normal color scheme. So you have green opposite blue, orange opposite red, and white opposite uh, whatever that is except that the color scheme is actually kind of wrong. Now for a sticker mod that I actually handmade, this is the pinwheel cube. Basically, I took a bunch of normal 3x3 stickers, cut them all up in this sort of pattern, and then applied them in sort of a checkered pattern. And fun fact, it's actually really hard to solve because it's really hard to tell when the opposite colors are lined up correctly. Like these are not lined up correctly, but it's really hard to tell. The checkerboard cube is pretty much the exact same thing, a handmade sticker mod, but with a slightly different pattern. Here's a good demonstration of why it's so hard to tell if it's solved. We have two white squares right here and two yellow squares. Whereas if we do this, now it's all messed up and it's just totally checkered. So in a way, you kind of have two solved states, one that's totally checkered and one that has those squares. This is the calendar cube, another Cubesmith sticker mod. Basically, you can turn the sides to make it display any date of the year. So right now it says Saturday, August 26th. So obviously it hasn't been updated for a while. I have a suspicion this might not have even been 2021 either. A couple more Cubesmith sticker sets here. This is the Super Cube, which is basically just a normal 3x3 sticker set, except it's a little bit more difficult to solve because there are ways to get it so that an arrow is misaligned like this. It's not too bad though on a 3x3. The 4x4 Super Cube, on the other hand is very challenging. It takes a lot of extra work to make sure all these center arrows are all lined up and you might need a couple extra algorithms. And by the way, it makes this terrible sound. It's made out of a V cube four. So that's V cube engineering for you. It also pops apparently. Now this sticker mod, if you squint your eyes a little, looks just like a scrambled three by three. Whereas in reality, it's actually a scrambled four by four. And so the solved state is actually this three by three scramble. Whereas if you have it scrambled, the three by three pieces won't line up and it gets very crazy looking. It's also pretty difficult to solve. Okay, so we're finally done with the mods now, except there's actually a few more. Anyway, for the rest of the shelf is a whole bunch of non-WCA puzzles. So basically cubes that are not competed in at official competitions. This is a Hexaminx. Basically a Megaminx turned into a cube. So you know how I said earlier that a Megaminx is kind of like a Rubik's Cube, but with 12 sides instead of 6? 
Well, yeah, this is what happens if you take those 12 sides and turn it back into six. It's pretty crazy, and fun fact, the stickers are terrible. This one fell off. This is the MF8 Sun Cube, which is kind of like a 3x3, except that it can do things like this and like this. This is the only cube that I've ever scrambled up before and just thought, nope, that's impossible. I couldn't even figure out how to start with solving it, and so I just gave up and took it apart. Now, this is another crazy turning cube from MF8. Basically, it's a combination of a 3x3, so it turns just like normal, and a curvy copter, which you'll learn about in about 10 seconds. So basically, it can turn on the faces and on the edges, which is just insane. The concept of combining two totally different cubes into one, unfortunately, it doesn't turn that great, and the centerpieces caused a lot of problems, so I had to remove them. This is the curvy copter. So basically, unlike a normal cube, which only turns on the faces, this one only turns on the edges, which makes for a really fun solving experience. It's just a really cool puzzle overall. And fun fact, the way I got this puzzle was actually a friend in middle school gave it to me. I think he got a black one and a white one and he only wanted one so he just gave me the white one here is another edge turning cube so pretty much the exact same thing as the curvy copter except without corners and actually if you look hard enough there are still corners they're just hidden underneath the pieces and so this is called the chi -Yi clover cube here's another unique turning cube from chi -Yi called the ancient coin cube this one actually turns on the corners as well as on the faces but it's not like a layer that's turning it's literally just the face and so you can kind of swap around pieces with the corners and then move these sides and that actually makes for a very easy and fun solving experience the chi -Yi pentacle cube is a very similar concept we also have these interesting turning faces like this, but then we also have these layers that turn around the faces. And so that means you can do some very weird looking things like this. This is the Chi Yi Super Ivy Cube. Kind of like an Ivy Cube, kind of like a Dino Cube, both cubes that I'll talk about in a minute. Basically, it turns around the corners like this and it kind of has these weird overlapping moves. And fun fact, this has been the most difficult cube so far to remember its name. I had to resort to scrolling through pages of the cubicle to find it. This is the Chi Yi Twisted Cube. This is what happens if you take a cube and really try and turn it like a 3x3 90 degrees. This is what you end up with. It's pretty Pretty fun, pretty easy. I'm not exactly sure how to align the centers though. This is the Mofeng Zhaoxi Skew mix up. It turns pretty much exactly like a skew, except halfway through a turn, if you want to, you can go ahead and do this and you can kind of mix pieces up in an unconventional way. As far as I remember, it's pretty easy and pretty fun to solve. This is the skew mix up also. I mean, the skew mix up too. Or maybe it's just called that because it can do the same thing, but split in two. This is the skew mix up two, and it's called the skew mix up three. Does that make any sense? Basically, it can do the same thing, but now in thirds. This is the Moyu Ready Cube, mentioned earlier in reference to the Ready Cube barrel, but I don't think I ever actually showed how it turns. It turns around the corners, and you can swap around the edges like this. Now, I don't normally lube my non obesity puzzles, but I can tell that I definitely lube this one because it turns very smoothly. This is the Chi-Yi Six Spot Cube, which looks kind of crazy, but it's actually just a cube with half the corners gone. And confusingly, Chi-Yi has also made the Ivy Cube, which is the exact same puzzle as this. It just looks a little bit different, so I'm not really sure why they made two identical puzzles. This is the Shengshao Dino Cube, a very simple puzzle and pretty similar to the Super Ivy Cube I showed earlier, but with less overlapping pieces. It might be a little bit hard to wrap your mind around it, but it is super easy to solve. And I think I actually planned to make a barrel out of it at one point, but then I realized that the mechanism was kind of complicated. And finally, the cube I've referenced a hundred times now, the Chi-Yi Ivy Cube. It is exactly the same as the Six Spot Cube, just a skew without corners, except it actually does have corners if you look closely. The Chi Fluffy 3x3 is one of the most interesting 3x3 shape mods because they didn't actually change the shape of the cube, they didn't change the angle that the cube was positioned at, they didn't change the way it turned at all, they just literally made the shapes a little bit different looking. Fluffy, apparently. This is the Armadillo Cube. It's also a 3x3 mod. It's kind of more of a sticker mod than a shape mod, and so basically now it has 12 colors, each of them centered around an edge. So funnily enough, each edge is just one single color. It's pretty cool looking. The creator of the cube actually sent it to me to try out on my channel, which was pretty cool before that had ever happened before. The Cubix Tube is a very creative shape mod. Basically, there's only three colors, and the goal is to get it so that there's a continuous tube from one side of the cube all the way around to the other, and you can actually stick a ball inside and it'll go all the way through. Interestingly, I got this at a cubing competition. I think they just gave one to all the competitors, and I think that's the only time that's ever happened. This is the Rubik's Void Puzzle, the basis of the Void Cube Chain mod that I mentioned earlier. It used to be really easy to demonstrate what it was, just a 3x3 with a hole through the middle, until I put a golf ball inside. Now it's not quite as easy to demonstrate, but it is a pretty cool concept. The Oscars treasure chest is always a favorite. It's pretty much just a 3x3, except that when it's solved, you can pop off the white side and stick something inside. Another Oscar cube made by Oscar Van Deventer, the person who made the first 17 by 17, and also another lubed cube. I don't know why, I just noticed that. But this is the mix-up cube, and so you can do crazy things like this. And I used to be able to solve it. It's one of the few puzzles that I used to be able to solve and probably couldn't anymore. So I should probably learn again. It was pretty fun. This is the Chi Yi 2x2x3, and interestingly, it actually solves almost exactly like a square one, because you can just solve this middle layer here, which is super easy, and then just hold it like this, and it's just square one corners. I'm just now realizing that I don't actually own this cube. It's a Rubik's Tower 2x2x4. I borrowed it from my friend Tim to make a video with him, and he never really wanted it back. So I'm just kind of holding on to it. I guess it's an unofficial part of my collection. This is the YJ Star Tower. I'm not exactly sure what it is or why it exists, but that's definitely a star. 
and it's definitely a tower. This is the infamous Super Square One Star. I bought it secondhand at my second ever cubing competition, along with the puzzle that I actually wanted, and it's just terrible in every single way. I actually learned how to solve it one time, I used a program to generate some algorithms, and then I never actually memorized them, because why would you want to? It's just terrible. This is the YJ Yeet Ball, pretty much the Chi Ivy Cube, but in ball form, and a fun fact is that Yeet! This is the Mefferts Gear Shift, which can do crazy things like this. I actually bought this at my very first cubing competition, US Nationals 2014, which took place at the Liberty Science Center, which had a Rubik's Cube exhibition going on, which was selling these cubes. And so I bought this during a cubing competition, but totally unrelated from the cubing competition. This is the Gear Cube, which is basically a 3x3, but with gears and all the pieces, which makes it so that you can only do 180 degree turns, which actually makes it a lot easier. I always thought that it was a Mefferts Gear Cube, but now I think it's actually probably just a knockoff. This is definitely not a Mefferts Gear Cube, it's actually made by Chi Yi, but it's not really just a knockoff because it actually has a slightly different design. The teeth are laid out a little bit differently, which makes it so that you can get some slightly different cases. Also, it turns way better. You can actually flip some edges around like this, which wasn't possible in the original. I think this Chi gear barrel, along with the star tower, are the only barrel cubes that I own that I didn't actually make. And so yeah, basically it's just a gear cube, except made into a shape of a barrel. Now Mefferts also made a gear barrel and a gear ball, and so Chi also made a gear ball. Again, it works a little bit differently and it turns so much better. Funny thing about all these gear puzzles is that they actually sent them to me, not wanting me to make a video about them yet, and then eventually they changed their mind and said that I could make a video about them, so I guess they hadn't decided to release them yet. Now if Chi had just copied those three gear puzzles and call it a day, then I would have been super happy, but no, they decided to keep going and copy the Mefferts Gear Pyraminx, which is just a terrible puzzle. I don't know why it exists or why they decided to make another one. Basically, it takes like five wrist turns just to do a single turn, and it's just not fun to solve. It turns bad. Okay, and now speaking of Pyraminxes, we now have about half a shelf completely crowded with other tetrahedral puzzles. First up is the Chi Pyramorphix. Now, a Morphix is basically just a normal cubic end band puzzle, in this case a 2x2, two two, turned into a four-sided tetrahedron. And so I actually have about 10 of these coming up. This one isn't really like any of the others, but it's very pokey, so it can do things like this. Next up is the Handmade Master Morphix. So this is a 3x3 version of the Morphix that I actually made myself. It's not up on the mod shelf because it fit well with this category. And yeah, this is just a 3x3. That's the centerpiece right there. You have the sides that turn around it just like this. It's pretty crazy to wrap your mind around, but it works just like that. And fun fact, this is actually where the black stickers from my Grayscale cube went, covering up the holes in those centers. This is the Moyu Mega Morphix, so it's actually just a 4x4 shape mod. I'm not sure why Moyu decided to make only a 4x4 Morphix and nothing else, but I don't know. So this is my third and final Morphix that doesn't really fit with any of the others. And that brings us straight into the Shangshao Morphixes. So this is the 2x2 Pure Morphix. Funnily enough, this was actually the last one that I bought, along with the 8x8. The 3x3 Master Morphix was the first Morphix that Shangshao made, and so also the first one that I bought. And interestingly enough, this is actually the old color scheme that they don't put on it anymore, which means that it actually doesn't match any of my other Morphixes. And speaking of not matching, the Shangshao 4x4 Mega Morphix for me had an infuriating problem out of the box. It had the wrong color scheme. Basically on a tetrahedral puzzle, you can flip around two colors and the color scheme will become incorrect. And so I actually had to pry apart the super glued together corners to fix the color scheme and make it actually match when I lined up all the morphixes together. The last morphix with a unique name, the Shangshao 505 Gigamorphix, is a really cool puzzle. I mean, all the morphixes become cooler as they get bigger, but also infuriatingly, it's a slightly different shape than the rest of the morphixes. It's kind of hard to tell, but basically the sides bulge out a little bit more than they do on any of the other morphixes. Here's the Shangshao 6x6 morphix, and like the rest of them, the sides in this one are relatively flat unlike the 5x5, five five, and like all even there morphixes, you can do some cool patterns like this. Now the Shangshao 7x7 Morphix is also pretty awesome and also pretty challenging to solve. That's because it's like a super cube. You have to get all the centerpieces in the right spot, which is pretty challenging on a big cube. And annoyingly, right after I made a video about unboxing all the Morphixes, they then came out with an 8x8. But I mean, if Shangshao wants to make more crazy puzzles, then I'm not going to stop them. This is the 8x8 Morphix, by the way. Shangshao is basically the king of making long, continuous lines of collectible puzzles. And so they've made everything from a 2x2 all the way up to a 17x17, including the only 14x14 and the only 16x16 on the market. And speaking of continuous lines of collectible puzzles, Shangshao did it again just recently with the Jing Pyraminxes, which is basically kind of like a Pyraminx, but without the tips and with these extra centers. Interestingly, this is also piece for piece a cube shape mod. And so if that was the 3x3 Jing Pyraminx, then this is the 4x4 Jing Pyraminx, also from Shangshao. Very strange looking to have these exotic, higher order, even layer puzzles. And of course, they made a 5x5 as well. These things are actually really fun to solve, especially the 5x5. They're a lot easier than the Morphixes. They're kind of just like a normal 5x5, but with fewer pieces. And finally, the Shangshao 6x6 Jing Pyraminx, these all came out super recently, by the way, and I hope they also come out with a 2x2 and a 7x7 version. But you know what? I'm not complaining. These are pretty awesome. And the cubicle actually sent me two identical 6x6 ones on accident. And so I gave one 
away to a random viewer in that video. I just mailed it out the other day. And just when you thought the Shengshao Jing pyraminxes were over, this is the Shengshao Void pyraminx, which is actually more like a Void Jing pyraminx because of the lack of tips and the centerpieces, except that the centerpieces are actually gone, so in a way, it's actually more like a pyraminx. This, on the other hand, is undoubtedly more of a Jing pyraminx, even though it's not called that, it's just called the Shengshao Mirror pyraminx, and basically, yeah, it's a Jing pyraminx, except with heights instead of colors, just like the classic mirror cube. Finally, moving back away from Shengshao, this is the Qi coin pyraminx, pretty much just like the ancient coin cube, except now in pyramid shape, and if you have a bit of basic intuition, it is stupid easy to solve. Now, just like the last one, this is another Qi cube turned into a pyramid. It's the Qi clover pyraminx, and so it turns on the edges, just like the clover cube, except interestingly, you can also turn it 90 degrees like this, and it actually becomes a master morphix, which is kind of insane. I don't understand it either, but apparently it's just a 3x3. This is the Chi Duomo Cube. You know, it's kind of funny sometimes how well I'm able to remember the names of some of these more obscure puzzles. I just kind of stared at it for a second and thought, yeah, Duomo, that's it. But then I started turning it and realized, oh yeah, that's because it turns like a Pyraminx Duo. Now, what is a Pyraminx Duo? Well, it's originally another Mefferts and another Oscar puzzle. Basically, there's four corners and four centers. Each time you turn a corner, all three centers around it turn like this, which looks kind of crazy, but it's actually stupidly simple to solve. Basically, you just kind of do it intuitively. You can solve any scramble in four moves or less. It's really easy. This is another Mefferts Pyraminx Duo, which strangely turns a lot better because I either accidentally ordered two of them or they just sent me two of them on accident. And you thought we were done with the Shangshao Pyramids, but nope, here's another one, the Shangshao Master Pyraminx, which is kind of like a 4x4 version of a Pyraminx, which is actually a really fun puzzle honestly one of my favorite non-WCA puzzles. It strikes a good balance of being pretty simple but also somewhat challenging to solve. This next one, the Moyu Corner Twist Pyraminx, isn't really a puzzle. It's more of just some corners that turn around a pyramid. It's basically if you were to take the tips of a pyraminx and distill them down into one puzzle. It might be a challenge for like a one-year-old but besides that, I mean, it's not a puzzle. Now, if that last one were just the corners of a pyraminx, then this one is just the edges of a pyraminx, the Moyu Boomerang Pyraminx. It's not quite as trivial as the last one. It takes a little bit of skill to solve, but it's still super easy. And like all these six puzzles that you're about to see, it has this really kind of annoying pastel color scheme. The strange pyramid combinations continue. So this one just has corners and centers. They call it the Moyu Bead Pyraminx, and it's actually the same thing as a pyraminx duo, the Moyu Windmill Pyraminx. This one has just edges and centers. And so we're starting to gain the difficulty scale at least a little bit. At least it takes a little bit of brain power to solve this one. The Moyu Maple Leaf Pyraminx, which looks suspiciously like the Chi Clover Pyraminx from earlier, but it's actually a totally different puzzle. That one turns on the edges, whereas this one turns around the corners like this. So basically it's a Pyraminx with the centers and the edges. So we're just working through all the different combinations. And finally, the best named puzzle of them all, the Moyu Triangle Pyraminx, which has corners, edges, and centers. So putting everything together, and you may recognize it because this is just a Jing Pyraminx. All right, final row of Pyraminxes, starting with the basic unmodified versions and going roughly from oldest to newest. So first up, you guessed it, it's the Shangshao Pyraminx, good old fashioned ball bearings and cubes that were so squared off that you had to sand them down yourself. The original Qi Pyraminx from back in the day when Qi was a new brand that nobody had ever really heard of, I bought it not so much for the upgrade, but more because I just liked the idea of a stickerless Pyraminx. I think this was the very first one, and so I had just never seen one before. Then I got a huge upgrade to the Moyu Magnetic Pyraminx, which I believe was the first mass produced cube with magnets ever. It replaced the old ball bearings in most old Pyraminxes and cubes, and yeah, it actually holds up very well even to this day. Moyu actually went another five years before releasing their next Pyraminx just a couple weeks ago. The original X-Man Bell Pyraminx, which by the way is a sub-brand of Chi Yi, was the main competitor to the Moyu Magnetic Pyraminx, and I think I like this one a little bit better for its stronger magnets. Funnily enough, Chi Yi actually sent this puzzle to me to review, which was one of the very first times that it happened with the Speed Cubing Company. This is the Chi Yi MS Pyraminx, part of a budget cube lineup. You'll soon be seeing the 2x2, 3x3, 4x4, and 5x5 versions as well. We're kind of getting more into the modern era of Pyraminxes, and yeah, it turns pretty well. The X-Man Bell V2 Pyraminx, a slight upgrade to the V1, which came out many, many years later. I used it as my main. I believe it was the first one to feature easily adjustable magnet strength. The Gan Pyraminx is a fairly good Pyraminx. The turning seems good in just about every way, except when you actually start using it, it sort of seems to deform a lot like this. It just kind of feels a little bit flimsy. This is the Steven's Little Magic Pyraminx, originally a Yushin Little Magic Pyraminx, but someone named Steven at the cubicle did some mods on it and set it up really nicely, and so now it turns really well, and it must be good because it actually set the world record average earlier this year. I'm not exactly sure how this got separated from the last one, but this is another Gan Pyraminx. I don't really remember what the difference is between the two, but it feels pretty similar to the last one. And the final Pyraminxes are Pyraminx Force Cubes. Now, I've made Force Cubes with a handful of different types of puzzles. The idea is you take a bunch of stickerless cubes, four in the case of Pyraminxes, because there's four different colors, you take them all apart and rearrange the colors so that you end up with one color per cube, and so that's what these are. They're made out of the Diane Pyraminx. And finally, onto the Megaminxes, or at least dodecahedral 12-sided type puzzles. Except that the first one isn't actually a dodecahedron. It is a Megaminx, though, so it does 
does have 12 colored sides. It's a transparent Mega Minx ball. It was a limited edition version, and yeah, I had to add the stickers myself. Unfortunately, I did have to delete my unboxing of it from YouTube because my editing program had a dumb bug where sometimes a blur effect wouldn't quite start working until a couple frames after the start of a clip, and so that exposed my address on the front of the box. This is the Shangshao Killer Minx, which is basically a 2x2 version of a Mega Minx, and so it only has the corners. And like I was saying earlier about Shangshao being the best about making large collectible puzzles, they actually make a 2x2, 3x3, 4x4, 5x5, which you'll see in a second, 6x6, 7x7, 8x8, 9x9, 11 by 11, and 13 by 13, which is the Zeta Minx, which is just absolutely crazy. This is the QJ Pyraminx Crystal, a very old puzzle now. It's kind of like if you were to combine a Mega Minx and a Pyraminx together. So you have the shape and the corners of a Mega Minx and the swappable edges of a Pyraminx. Now this is actually the puzzle that I bought along with the Super Square One Star for $5 at a cubing competition. This is the Shangshao Giga Minx. Just like I was talking about earlier with the Killa Minx, this is the five by five version of a Mega Minx and it is just absolutely massive. My biggest dodecahedral puzzle and definitely my favorite too. All right, the Mefferts Mega Minx. This is a very old puzzle, obviously my first Mega Minx, and probably the oldest puzzle since one of those gear cubes on the last shelf. It actually has cubes with tiles on it, arranged in my own terrible color scheme, it's just, it's pretty awful. The original YJ Yuhu Mega Minx is not nearly as fun to say as my current main, the YJ Yuhu V2, and so correspondingly, it does not turn as well. This is the original X-Man Galaxy Mega Minx, which was just a huge jump in Mega Minx hardware. It has this nice sculpted design, which is really easy to grip, and the turning of it was just good. I think I actually used this my first ever time competing in Mega Minx, which was at US Nationals. This is the X-Man Galaxy V2 Mega Minx. I got the concave version instead of the sculpted version, thinking it might be a little bit easier to turn, but it wasn't, and my intention originally was to magnetize it back in the days before you could just buy a magnetic Mega Minx, but the magnets that I ordered from some sketchy website never arrived, so I just never did anything with it. Pretty much a fail of a cube in every single way. Soon after that, the X-Men Galaxy V2M came out, which had magnets pre-installed, and so I quickly bought it in the sculpted version, because I had learned better by that point. And finally, the Force Mega Minxes. I was going to try and hold all 12 of them at the same time, but that quickly didn't turn out, so now I'm just holding 6. These are the most recent Force Cubes that I made out of Mega Minxes, which means of course there's 12 of them, because there's 12 colors, and they are just kind of insane. Very, very useless, but also fun to make, and pretty cool looking. Oops. All right, 10 hours and four shelves down, just two more to go. Let's start out with my miscellaneous 7x7 through 5x5 cubes. This is the Chi Yi Wuji 7x7, my first real 7x7 speed cube coming from the V cube, so a massive improvement. And it seems crazy to me now that I would re-sticker an entire 7x7 just for the sake of matching shades. The YJ Yufu V2M is an amazing budget 7x7 that I think I actually unboxed during my last major collection video in 2020. Now currently I'm using the Yushin Hay 7M, which is a $60 cube, and this cube is pretty comparable in the turning, and it's just $17, so quite a good deal if you ask me. The V-Cube 6B, a pillowed and slightly less terrible version of the V-Cube 6, this is probably one of the oldest cubes on the shelf right here, and I got it because, I don't know, I wanted to collect all the V-Cubes I guess. The Chi Yi Wuhua, again my first 6x6 speed cube that I got along with the Wu Ji, but this one turns a lot worse, I think I just lubed it really badly. I have actually put magnets in it, but it's really hard to tell that they're in there. I'm thinking of taking them out someday so I can put them to better use in a cube that I use more often. And the X-Man Shadow 6x6M, my first factory magnetized 6x6, which I remember was pretty expensive because I bought it with my own money, and I used it for a while, it turned pretty well, until the MGC came out, which just beat it in every single way. On to the 5x5s with the V-Cube 5. This is my second oldest 5x5, of course, after the Rubik's 5x5. It turns, I mean, pretty bad, as you'd expect for a V-Cube, and it's also accidentally white, which is entirely my fault, because I ordered it myself off of Amazon, probably with a gift card or something. The Yushin 5x5 was a revolutionary 5x5, not just for me, but for the entire big cube market. It's a very old cube now but it still stands up pretty well the turning was amazing for the time in my mind this is like the first good turning big cube and random fun fact i did actually recently pull out all the magnets that i put in some of them were already falling out and i put them to better use this is an angstrom 5x5 i think it's like a moyu outwang so it was set up super well by the cubicle it has magnets and all that and it was definitely my best cube for a short time until the valk 5 came out Chi Yi MS is a name that I promised you would hear again, and this is their budget 5x5. I honestly haven't used it much since the unboxing, but I can say that it turns pretty well, and it's magnetic. And on the other hand, MGC is MoYu slash YJ's budget cube lineup, so this is the MGC 5x5, and it actually turns super well. Of course, I'm using the MGC 6x6 as my main, and honestly, it's kind of a toss-up between this and the Valk 5. Oh, this is actually really good. Maybe I should be using this cube. And on to the 4x4s, which apparently I have a lot of. So first up is the Moyu Weisu. This was my first 4x4 speed cube. And fun fact, I actually signed up to compete with this cube at my first competition, US Nationals 2014, but then I withdrew from the round because I was way too slow to meet the cutoff. The Moyu Mini Aosu was then my first good 4x4 speed cube, which I used for many years, as you can probably tell by the stickers. I also have magnetized it, but you can barely feel them, so I might pull them out of this cube as well. Okay, the New Island Windstorm. This was my first and last encounter with a cube company on Amazon 
Amazon. There are a lot of knockoff cube brands on Amazon. Do not buy cubes from Amazon. And basically one of them reached out to me and asked to send me a couple of cubes to review. And I said, yes. They also sent a stickerless version right here. And the cubes actually did turn pretty well for their time, but everything about that company just felt very strange. The cubes were very strange compared to everything I had seen before. And so I've never bought a cube from Amazon since. This is a funny one. It's actually a relatively new budget cube, like a Mofeng Zhaoxi MF4 or something like that. But I put a very old set of stickers on it that I had from Cubesmith just lying around in a drawer. So these very old fashioned dull shades make the cube look super old even though it's actually relatively new. This is, I'm gonna go with the Angstrom Aosu V2 or something like that. I took all the logo stickers off my 4x4s a while back and I've regretted it ever since because now I cannot tell half of these stickerless ones apart. But I think this is the nicely set up Angstrom one from the cubicle. I could be totally wrong though. The Chi Wukwe Mini 4x4, factory magnetized version, also a very good cube that I used for a while after the Mini Aosu. I actually bought this cube at the same time as the Shadow 6x6, I believe at a competition US Nationals in person from the cubicle. And this is a full size Chi Wukwe. It must be a little bit older because it's not magnetized. I remember specifically getting this cube and choosing not to use it as my main over the Aosu. The only thing I remember doing with it actually is using it as a sacrificial 4x4 speed cube for some underwater challenges. Okay, this is where my memory really starts to fail me and my idiotic removal of the logos. I believe this is the MGC 4x4. I'm not 100% sure, but just based on the color of the plastic, it seems like MGC. And I believe that makes this the Chi MS 4x4. Definitely a little bit more of a budget cube, but still magnetic, still turns pretty decent. Maybe not quite as good as that last one. Okay, I'm confident with this one. This is just the Volk 4. It's the same cube that I use as my main. For some reason, I have two of them. I think they have slightly different strength of magnets. And finally, a cube that I know very well, but not because I ever used it as my main. This is the Moyu Aosu WRM, and I have solved this cube one turn per day, which took over three months, and one turn per mile, which took over 100 miles of running. Time for some skubes, followed by some square ones. I'm pretty tired, in case you can't tell. This is the Land Land Skube, my very first cube that I used to compete at my very first competition, US Nationals 2014, and fun fact, it has Legos inside of it, because I made torpedoes out of Legos, one of them is rattling around. The Moyu Skube was a pretty big upgrade, in part just because it has torpedoes built in, so it didn't pop every time you try and turn it, and Skube quickly became my favorite WCA event using this cube. Nowadays, it's my favorite side event after 3x3. The original Chi Skube, on the other hand, might not have been much of an upgrade, but it was stickerless, which I thought was the coolest thing ever, as the first stick cube. The Moyu Magnetic Skube was a pretty big upgrade, in part because it was the first skube with magnets instead of ball bearings, which made for a much faster, uninterrupted, smooth turning experience. Then, much like with the story of the Pyraminxes, Chi came along and edged out Moyu with their X-Man Wingy Skube, which is an amazing turning skube. It also has this awesome concave design, which I'm kind of sad that we haven't seen repeated on any modern skubes. Then the Moyu something or other skube came along and beat out Chi once again. Competition is amazing, right? It has these little dots which help with grip a little bit, but I always preferred the fully concave design design of the X-Man Wingy. And finally, Gan came along with their skubes and blew away both Chi and Moyu. These things are just amazing. I'm currently using one as my main. This is just the other version that doesn't have as many magnets. And finally, the Skube Force Cubes, or Force Cubes, or maybe Force Cube Force Cubes? I don't know. They're colorful and you can't really solve them, but they're pretty cool looking. On to square ones. This was my first square one, the Cube Twist square one, a uh, C for Cube Twist, I guess. And it turns... Well, it turns about like that. This was my final case of, oh my gosh, Chi made a stickerless cube, I must buy it. Except that this square one was actually totally revolutionary in the square one market. It's actually able to corner cut in a way that older square ones couldn't. So it led the way for newer square one designs. This is the YJ Guanlong square one. And I think I've already told both stories about it, but they're so good that I have to tell them again. I actually got it at a cubing competition. Somebody gave it to me because I was the one who was able to recite the most digits of pi. And then later on, when I was going to re-sticker my main square one, I accidentally unstickered the wrong cube, this one, instead of my main. This is the Yushin Little Magic Square One, and I believe this was the first square one to be fully magnetized, both on the slice layer as well as on the top layers, just having one little click for each increment that you turn it, and I think I was the first one to actually do this on my square one. And this was that cube, which was potentially the first square one to have the top and bottom layer magnetized. It's actually an X-Man Volt, and funny thing is, later on, X-Man actually re-released it with those magnets installed from the factory. And funny thing is, when I released the video about it, Brandon Lin, I think square one world record holder at the time, or close to it, commented on my video asking about the mod. On to the 2x2s. You know what, that reminds me of US Nationals one year when I heard them call 2x2 round 2 heat 2 to stage blue. This is the pillowed version of the V-Cube 2 called the V-Cube 2B. I think I actually got it in a DIY kit because I must have applied these stickers because they look terrible. And I actually did some modifications to it that made it turn actually a lot better. This is the cubic V-Cube 2, which I also modded by rounding down these corners, but somehow it actually turns worse. And take a look at these white stickers. These are absolutely destroyed. In fact, one of them was so destroyed that it looks like I had to replace it with a sticker from the pillowed version. The YJ glow in the dark 2x2 glows in the dark apparently. 
but its more notable feature is its terrible turning. The YJ Guanpo Plus is a pretty decent budget 2x2 speed cube, I guess. For some reason, the cubicle decided to send it to me in white, though. The Rubik's Speed, contrary to its name, isn't particularly speedy and wasn't made by Rubik's. It was actually designed by Gan, and, you know, it sure beats a Rubik's 2x2, but it's not that great. The Moyu Lingpo was my first ever 2x2 speed cube, a pretty nice upgrade from the V Cube 2, and I used it at US Nationals 2014, my first competition. The Moyu Weipo was a slight incremental upgrade to the Moyu Lingpo. The funny thing is, I think this cube had actually been released by the time I bought the Lingpo. I just bought my early cubes a little bit out of order. The same thing happened with the Weisu and the Aosu. This cube has some ridiculous six syllable name that I can't be bothered to look up right now. I think Chuwen is part of it, but basically it was my first magnetic 2x2. I put the magnets in it myself and I used it as my main. The Guoguan TSM 2x2 is a decent 2x2 that can actually change size, which is a feature that is about as useless as it sounds. You should have seen this one coming, the Chi MS 2x2. The one thing I remember about this unboxing video with the 2x2, 3x3, 4x4, 5x5, and Pyraminx is I did it as kind of a race between these budget cubes and my high-end main cubes, and I got pretty much the exact same time on both of them. The MGC Elite 2x2 is a very good 2x2. I very well could have used it as my main for a while, but I actually didn't realize how good it was until after I had finally found a better cube. The Volk 2M was a pretty good high-end speed cube that I used for a long time, but frankly, just turning it right now, I kind of wish I had been using the MGC Elite. This is another Valk 2M. I actually got one of them as an Angstrom cube from the cubicle. I honestly can't remember which one at this point. The loop has long worn out. But basically, I put both logos on this cube because I didn't want one on my main cube, which I was actually using. This is the GAN 2x2. There's actually three different types for some reason, and I have all three. I'm using one of them as my main at the moment, and this one is the minimally magnetized version. And finally, this is the third GAN 2x2. I honestly can't remember the names anymore. I think this is like the super crazy heavily magnetized version, which I think was my second favorite with the magnets turned all the way down. I use it sort of as my comp competition practice cube. Alright, penultimate set of cubes on the penultimate shelf. You may be wondering what this random assortment of 3x3s and a 2x2 is. These are all of my smart cubes, so they connect to a smartphone and they track your progress through an app. Now this was definitely not the first smart cube, but it was the first smart 2x2 made by Geiker. I think GoCube has actually made one recently, but it had the really nice feature of coming with a disposable coin cell battery that lasted a long time instead of having to deal with rechargeable batteries. This actually is the first smart cube, and this should go in chronological order from now on. This is the Geiker Cube. I believe it's actually a second version of it. I didn't actually get it until over a year after it came out, but it's a decent smart cube, the turning's okay, and the app is actually pretty good. The GoCube was my first smart cube, and the first one that I showed on this channel, resulting in a video with like 2 million views because it was just so new to everybody. And yeah, the turning is pretty okay. The app is pretty good, but the biggest annoyance I have with it is just the awkward semi-pillowed shape. This was my second smart cube, the GAN 356i. Being made by GAN, it was of course the best turning smart cube at the time, but the app wasn't that great, and overall it was a mediocre experience. The Rubik's Connected was a pretty interesting concept. It was actually made by the same company as the GoCube, but branded under Rubik's, and it was a lot cheaper than the GoCube. It also had this nice cubic shape, but the turning was the same okay-ish, and the app was pretty good. The GAN 356i Carry was then a slight improvement to the GAN smart cubes. The turning was a little bit better, the app was a little bit better, it had a non-rechargeable battery, which was actually pretty nice, and most of all, it was a lot cheaper. In fact, this thing is actually like half the price of Gain's normal 3x3s. The Hey Cube was a pretty cool idea, a smart cube that doesn't require an app and actually shows you how to solve it with little light-up rings on each side. Unfortunately, the cube doesn't turn that great, and it makes a really annoying high-pitched noise, and the software just wasn't very speed cubing focused last time I checked. And finally, the Moyu Weilong AI was Moyu's first smart cube, but it's also now by far the best smart cube for speed cubing. There are some that are cheaper, like the Gain I Carry, there are some that have better apps, whereas this one has the best speed cubing performance hands down. It literally has the exact same mechanism on the inside as Moyu's normal high-end flagship 3x3. Okay, on to a bunch of miscellaneous little puzzles right here. This, I guess you could say, was my first cuboid, a 1x1x2. Handmade, of course, at around the same time as that original 1x1, but I can tell that my modding skills had improved a little bit because the packing tape is now gone. There's still black painted Legos, and the stickers are still very papery with the Rubik's logo, but it looks a little nicer overall. This was not my first 1x2x2. You'll see that one in a minute. This is just one that I made later on with 3D printing just for fun. I found a design online, and it doesn't turn that great, but it is 3D printed, and it is pretty cool. This was my first 1x2x2, and it was also one of the very first mods on this channel. Basically, there's a mini Ishin 2x2 in the middle there, and a bunch of extensions glued on made out of pieces of other Ishin 2x2s. It also has cubes with tiles on it, which just makes it a really nice, good-feeling puzzle overall. Other than my old end by end cubes, I think I only have two other puzzles with cubesmith tiles. This is a Christmas tree cube. It's actually just a 1x2x3, and yeah, it's a fun little puzzle. You can do patterns like this and this, and it's also stretchy, apparently, just like a real tree. This is a Christmas tree cube shape mod, or uh, maybe the other way around. It is a Chi Yi 1x2x3. This is a boring old Chi floppy cube, a 1x3x3, except, oh yeah, it can also spin around one extra axis that normal floppy cubes can't. This is a very long cuboid, a 1x2x5, and you know what? My fun fact about this was going to be that it's totally broken, but somehow it's totally working right now. I don't remember fixing it, but I might have fixed it. I don't know. This middle part was totally broken last time I checked. 
but it works now. This is the Mefferts Mini Mall Cube. It's a keychain cube, and the goal is to have it so that there's no two matching colors on each side. So each side should have nine distinct colors, which as you can see, it is currently solved. And I definitely used to call it the Mole Cube before I got the joke of Mole Cube, Mole Cube. This is a mini keychain cube of some variety or another, and the turning is... Well, it turns. The same cannot be said about this mini keychain 2x2. In fact, it is completely hollow. There's no mechanism inside. This was the cube I used to make my Lego 2x2, and so afterwards I took all the original tiles and just glued them together back into a cube. This is a mini keychain Pyraminx. It also turns, in fact, probably a little bit better than this cube. And fun fact, I am an idiot and I put this keychain on backwards. This is a Rubik's brand keychain 3x3. It must be pretty old because I don't recognize that logo, and it actually turns surprisingly well. I must have lubed it at some point, but the corner cutting is still non existent. And fun fact, I don't think this is actually mine, I think I probably stole it from one of my siblings. And finally, out of all my mini keychain puzzles, this is the one that actually turns pretty well. This is the Chi Mini Gear Cube, and I have no idea out of all the puzzles they could have made into a mini version, they decided to choose the one that has the most intricate little pieces and gears and spinning parts, but you know, they did it. It spins pretty well. This is a mini 2x2, Ishin brand, so the same ones that I used to make my 1x2x2, and it should make no sense as to why I have a mini 2x2 here until about 2 seconds from now. This is a mini Ishin 2x2. Stuck to another mini 2x2. Two two. They're just fused together like this. It's actually a pretty popular puzzle that I used to see around a lot, but I haven't so much recently, and so I decided to buy a bunch of them online just to have them around because these mini 2x2s two two are really good for modding. But after doing that, I realized that I could also rearrange the pieces into a single 2x2, two two, a double 2x2, two two, a triple 2x2, two two, and also a quad 2x2, two two, which I already had. So yeah, this is my triple fused 2x2s. Two two. It can do things like this. And finally, the quad fuse 2x2s. This is actually a puzzle that I had for a long time. I think I actually recently added the Ishin logo to it. The mechanisms were exactly the same, and so yeah, I just figured I'd make them all match. Here we go. This is a handmade 1x1. It's made out of a die, and it's a lot better made than the old 1x1 up there. I could have sworn I had a cubicle 1x1 laying around somewhere, which is a lot better made than even this one, but I couldn't find it. This is a cubicle 1x1, a 1x1 Pyraminx that is, the hardest of all the Pyraminxes. I actually made one of these myself years ago out of a Pyraminx tip. Here it is right here. And fun fact, this was actually made out of one of the tips of the Pyraminx barrel. And finally, one more cubicle 1x1, the 1x1 Mega Minx, the hardest of all the Minxes. And this one just looks really nice. You could use it as like a 12-sided die, I guess. It's just a really cool little puzzle. I actually she made one of these myself, but we don't talk about that one. This is the One Cube, a 5.7 millimeter 3x3, just 0.1 off the smallest fully functional Rubik's Cube ever, and one tenth the edge length of a normal 57 millimeter cube. You could fit 1,000 of these inside of a normal 3x3. Unfortunately, this one does not turn because I broke it on my first turn, but in theory, it was at least designed to be able to turn. Now it's glued together. This is the one centimeter 3x3. Shockingly, it measures in at one centimeter. Who would have guessed? It is actually mass produced, so it turns a lot better than the other one. And overall, it's just a really fun little cube that anyone can go out and buy and play with. This is the Maru Nano Cube. It's a bit older of a puzzle than the last one, and this one used to be the smallest mass produced cube at 1.5 centimeters. It turns pretty well. It was actually a DIY puzzle though, so you had to put it together and sticker it yourself. This is the world's smallest Rubik's Cube, and by that I mean Rubik's Branded Cube. Apparently they don't know about all the other Rubik's Cubes that exist, and yeah, as you might expect with all Rubik's Brand Cubes, it turns pretty terrible. This is the GAN 330. It used to be a mini keychain cube, but I removed the keychain holes just to make it an amazing speed cube. Of course, it's made by GAN, so it just turns amazingly. I added magnets, looped it all up, and it's just the best mini cube possible. This was the sacrificial GAN 330 that I used to make the other one so good. So that one had no keychain holes. This one has two keychain holes. Very much WCA illegal even to have one of them, actually. And finally, we are in the home stretch. It is time for the last shelf, the 3x3s. For this one, I've organized things a little bit differently. I've actually sorted them by brand just because I have so many of them. First up, the brand of my very first speed cube, Diane. And this is that first speed cube. This is also what you get from ordering cubes on Amazon, a white cube when you ordered a black cube. It's also a Guhong V1 when the V2 was already out at the time, as well as a Zanchi, which was also out at the time. I just didn't know what I was doing, so I bought a really old cube, but it turned well. It was a good upgrade for me. Now, this was my second ever speed cube after I realized I could upgrade to a slightly better Diane cube, the Diane Zanchi. Actually, at the time, there were much better Moyu cubes out, like the original Moyu Weilong, but I was oblivious to all that. This was also my first stickerless cube and my first time ordering from the cubicle. Then I had my first cubing competition coming up, so I had to buy this cube, another Diane Zanchi, but this time in black. I used this as my main for a very long time, and it wasn't until 2015 that they changed the rule where you could actually use stickerless cubes in competitions. I still find it really funny though when people still think that you can't. This is a mini 55mm Diane Zanchi, as opposed to the normal 57mm. They used to make them in a whole bunch of different sizes. This one was pretty good for one-handed, and it's actually amazing how much you can tell the difference. Like those last three cubes, they felt really big in my hands. This one feels really small in my hands, and that's because the normal size of a cube nowadays has shifted to 56 millimeters, right in the middle. This is the Diane Tangyan M, a slightly more modern Diane cube. They stopped making cubes for a long time and then K9 
came back many years later. This is one of their first really good modern cubes. It's actually super quiet, probably the best one for cubing in quiet places. This is the Guhong V4, another modern Dian cube, and I guess the updated version of my very first V cube. It's more of a budget oriented cube, but it still turns pretty well. It's actually the cube that I used to make my world's lightest speed cube that I talked about earlier, and I liked it so much that I had to buy another one after making that mod. Moving on to GAN cubes now, this was my very first one, the GAN 356 Air SM. I used to only buy 3x3s when I really needed them, and so for a long time I never had any GAN cubes. People would comment like, what about your GAN puzzles? And I'd be like, I don't have any. And so eventually, someone sent me this one. I should mention that I really liked it though, and so as soon as the next major upgrade came out, the GAN XS, I went ahead and bought it myself for like 60 something dollars. This has been kind of my sacrificial GAN cube since then. I've taken it to the top of the 100 highest mountains in Colorado and done a bunch of crazy stuff with it. So the turning has suffered a little bit since then. This is the Max GAN X, so I guess that was actually a different model that came before the XS. Basically, the cubicle sent this to me to show off their new Max line of puzzles, named after Max Park, and it was really nicely set up. I really like how it turns. And this is the Max GAN XS, the best cube around at the time, at least by my opinion, which they sent over as well. And this cube was also set up amazingly, and it was definitely my main for a long time. Having this cube was basically the reason that I sacrificed my other XS, because I figured I at least had one that turned amazingly. This is the GAN Air M, or something like that. I kind of lost track of their naming scheme at some point, but basically it was just kind of a random high-end cube release. It didn't really have anything extra to offer, and so really the only reason I got it was because I wanted to make a video that was like $50 cube versus $9 cube, and the $9 cube did pretty well. And finally, the GAN 11M Pro-ish, the first 3x3 with core magnets, which are a really cool technology that kind of help pull you towards each turn, more so than normal magnets, and it just turned super well. It was my main for a year or so, until the GAN 12 came out, and that's why I say ish, because like I mentioned earlier, some of the pieces are actually swapped out with my GAN 12 maglev. Now we're jumping way back to my first competition, when I was about to use the Black Sanji, except that about an hour before my round, I went over and checked out the Cubicles physical shop, tried out all of their 3x3s, found the one that I liked the turning of the best, and this was it, the Moyu Weilong, and so I bought it and used it in my competition without ever really practicing with it. Jumping ahead many years now, I finally got my second Moyu Cube with the Weilong WRM. I believe at the time the GTS 3M was kind of like the big thing, and this one came out and everyone liked it, and I used it as my main for a little while. And then moving ahead a few more years to the Weilong WRM 2020, Fun fact, this is the only cube that I've ever unboxed in the state of Idaho, and I also use this cube on and off in between my GAN 11 and Pro. And finally, this cube deserves an honorary mention for my current main, the Moyu Weilong WRM 2021 Magla version. Cube names are getting kind of ridiculous at this point, it also has core magnets added, it's purple on the inside, and it just turns so well. On to YJ, and some other more differently branded Moyu cubes. This is the Guanlong Plus, which, much like the Guanpo Plus, I have no idea why it's white, but it's a pretty decent budget cube. This is a YJ Yulong, I think it's like a magnetic version 2 or something, set up by the Cubicle Pro Shop, it's just a pretty good budget speed cube, and especially with that nice lube, it was competitive with a lot of high-end speed cubes. The YJ MGC 3x3 is a cube that I honestly remember nothing about, I imagine it's probably a budget cube, it turns pretty well, and and it looks like it has adjustable magnets. This is the Guoguan Yushao Pro, maybe? Yeah, let's go with Pro, a cube that came out just a little bit before magnets, but it has a really nice, unique, smooth, fluid feel to it. And I believe that makes this the Guoguan Yushao EDM, which was the first cube with adjustable magnets. They're really hard to adjust though, but it also has Moyu's nice elasticity adjustment system. This is the Mofeng Zhaoxi MF3RS2, a very nice budget cube, but definitely overshadowed by the other version that I got at the exact same time. The Cubicle Labs MF3RS2M, back when manually gluing magnets into a cube was a feature, this was the budget magnetic cube to get, and yeah, I used it as my main, it was really good. Then the sort of sequel to that cube came out, the Moyu RS3M 2020, which I guess is half Moyu, half Mofeng Zhaoxi, and this is the budget cube that I recommend to everyone as a good magnetic cube for only $9. And then they made an updated 2021 version, and then they made a maglev version of it right here. In my opinion, it doesn't make much sense to put maglev in a budget speed cube because, for one, it makes it more expensive. And real quick, jumping back to the RS3M 2020, this was a fun little project where I took an old set of CubeSmith tiles off of my brother's cube, don't tell him, and stuck them onto a modern speed cube, which is kind of like a weird mix of 2020 and 2010 technology. These are the YJ Yulong transparent force cubes, my first ever set of force cubes, and also the only set of force cubes that I have actually stickered. And so they are semi-transparent stickerless puzzles, which makes for a really cool look, and I added semi-transparent stickers to them, which just makes them awesome. The blue one is kind of hard to solve though. Moving on to Chi Yi and all of their various sub-brands, this is the Chi Yi Thunderclap, my first Chi Yi 3x3, and it was amazing, it was my main for a long time. I remember I got it around the same time as Lubical Silk came out, and I put so much Lubical Silk in this thing. Here's the original Valk 3, which I think Chi Yi actually sent to me, and I have abused this cube so much. Look at the stickers, I've added magnets to it, I changed out the adjustment system to maglev way before that was a thing, and currently it has a GAN adjustment system. I also got this cube at the same time, another Valk 3 but in stickerless, at the time I preferred to use sticker cubes, and fun fact, this was my first cube that I ever magnetized. I actually put magnets in this one first, just to test it out for my main, and I liked it so much that I just kept doing it. This is the Valk Elite M, a slightly newer cube that almost became my main at some point. It has a very nice buttery smooth feel to it, kind of like that newer Diane cube, and it's the only cube I know of that actually has magnets 
points in the center caps. This is the Chi MS 3x3. You're finally seeing the end of the Chi MS lineup. And yeah, it's a budget 3x3 with magnets. What did you expect? The X-Men Tornado V2 is a much more recent 3x3 release. And so this one turns very well. Probably Chi's best cube at the moment. And yeah, it's just a really good cube. Very adjustable, has nice adjustable magnets, elasticity, tensions, and all that. This is the Chi Big Sail. It's a Chi Sail, and it's really big, like six centimeters. I used to use it as my main for feet solving until feet was removed as an official event in 2020. This is a Chi 3x3 that has absolutely no significance. This is a random Chi 3x3 that somebody gave to me at a competition. It has totally the wrong color scheme, which probably has some significance, but I have no idea. This is another random Chi 3x3 that I thought had absolutely no significance until about a minute ago when I realized that this is the Magnet Finger Cube. Look at that. Now onto a bunch of miscellaneous 3x3s. This is the Yushin Kylin V2M, which has no stickers. It has these nice built-in tiles, except that's a lie because it actually has one sticker because I lost the center cap while skiing. This is the Sen Juan Mars S, a 3x3 that the only thing I know about it is the fact that I always say that I know nothing about it during my cube collection videos. That's the only reason I still remember the name. I think it has something to do with Mo YJ, but I'm not sure. And then the Feng Shi Shrong Ren, which was actually a pretty decent speed cube back in the day of Diane, but more so than that, it's the Illusion Cube. So it just looks cool with this nice black and white design. This is perhaps the worst value cube I have ever bought. It's one of the newer Rubik's brands from Walmart. I bought it because I wanted to make an underwater cubing video, but I didn't want to ruin my main speed cube, and it turns terribly. In fact, the white center was actually broken when I got it, so this cap just pops off like that. There's a little rivet underneath. It's not a screw. I've tried turning it. It's like they do whatever they can to prevent you from taking it apart. This is the Rubik's Speed 3x3. Again, not a Rubik's made cube and not particularly speedy. It was designed by GAN, of course, just like the 2x2. And to be fair, it does turn pretty well, at least compared to a Rubik's brand. This is the Shangshao Pearl. It turns well. I I guess. Shangshao isn't particularly well known for making 3x3s, and yeah, it's just kind of a random cube. This is a Shangshao Wind. I had a bunch of these cubes at one point because they were really cheap, and I used them for making a bunch of sticker mods, and I think maybe even the barrel mod. And so this is just the one that's left over. I use it for a bunch of underwater challenges. This is a random old knockoff cube from the 80s that I think my dad found for me at one point, and so just on a whim, I decided to make a video where I put the newest lubricant, Lubricle Silk, inside of it to see what happens, and now that video has three quarters of a million views. And finally, the one 3x3 without green facing in front because, well, it has no green. This is the green screen cube. I specifically ordered these stickers from Cubesmith so that there would be no green so I could use it with a green screen. And fun fact, this is actually the cube that I used in my how to make a dollar store cube awesome, a super old video that has a criminally high number of views like one and a half million. Oops, I almost just ended the video without addressing the 125 random 3x3 stacked up here. I think we better do that real quick. These are two out of 125 identical Maylongs. A pretty decent turning cube, but more importantly, a very cheap cube because, well, I bought 125 of them just for various video projects. And just a fun fact, these actually cost more to ship to the US than the cubes cost themselves. Luckily, they still were pretty cheap though. And that's it. That's the end of Cube Collection 2022. We did it. Just to give you an idea, I'm now over 15 hours into filming this. I had to take a quick break overnight. It's now the morning of the second day. And that doesn't include setup and takedown and scrambling and solving and editing and all that. So if you've made it this far and you're still not subscribed, well, if that doesn't earn a subscription, then I don't know what will. If you're still watching at this point though, leave a comment down below about octopuses or octopi or whatever, just to let me know that you're still watching. But anyway, I seriously hope you all enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time.